My wife is a huge fan of Jane Austen, but I think mostly of Pride and Prejudice. Not so much Sense and Sensibility and not so much anything else. So, and she, what it is she loves is the language. I can't stand it because the lady, my wife listens to it read on an audio book and I cannot stand the sound of the lady doing the voice of Mrs. Bennett. God, dingbat. Ugh. Anyway, and so I would urge you to either get the book uh, on tape and listen to it or uh, go get the, uh, I think it's a PBS or BBC, probably BBC um, six or seven episodes of uh, Pride and Prejudice. And here's the question I want you to entertain. Which of her daughters was Mrs. Bennett most like when she was young? And I think if you'll entertain that, that, and let's just say, agree with me, that she was probably very, very much like that daughter that you're thinking of. And so then that poor SOB, Mr. Bennett, you know, he falls in love with her, I, the word they use is bosoms. He falls in love with her bosoms. He falls in love with her vivacious energy. And now what's he got after all these years, you know? Uh, not the sharpest tool in the shed. Well, all right. Uh, but divorce is not an option in those days. So, um, a while back, I was talking to this uh, Pakistani gentleman, and he was, as is the custom with many Islamic foreigners, he was uh, condemning America's outrageous divorce rate, and isn't it awful? And I said, you know what? As soon as Pakistan liberates women so that they can earn an independent living, so that a woman can support herself and hopefully some children without depending on a man, Pakistan's divorce rate will skyrocket and make ours look pretty damn small. And his 18-year-old daughter, you wouldn't think she'd be that aware of the cultural situation. She laughed out loud. She knew it was true. Uh, I'll sort of, well, okay, another example. Um, this uh, Vietnamese gal was telling me what a disgrace it was that Americans uh, do such a bad job of taking care of their old people. And I said, well, uh, how many Vietnamese families do you know that have the wife's mother living with them? And she said, oh, I don't know any. And so I said, if you marry a Vietnamese man and you say you want your mother to come live with you, how is that going to go? And she said, eh, it probably isn't going to go. And I said, so could we agree that Vietnamese families do a much better job than American families in taking care of the husband's parents. Yeah, she could agree with that. Okay, so I'm on my third marriage and I gotta say, it's just luck. It's just luck. I just have this sense that God or the universe has said, uh, you know, pal, this is where you belong. Take any amount of crap that come crap that comes your direction, whatever. Now I gotta say, a hell of a lot of love comes my direction, but the universe has said, we don't care. We don't care. This is we found a square hole for your square peg. God damn it, stay there. Well, my folks were married. Uh, probably 70 years and I don't think anybody who knew them thought that was a good idea but when she you know once Alzheimer's finally got her 
The only thing in her life that she recognized was the back of my dad's head as he walked in front of her. And as long as she could see the back of his head, she was safe. She was okay. And if she couldn't see the back of his head, then she started asking, where's Don? Where's Don? And you know, one night I took him out to dinner and then I brought him back to the nursing home. And I uh, waited out in the hallway because dad said he needed to tuck mom in. God, I've been out there about 20 minutes. I finally went in to see what's going on. And he's sitting on the edge of the bed, patting her hand, and he's telling her about old times and things they'd done together. So I went out in the hallway and I said to the nurse, and I have never seen my father do anything like that, show that sort of solicitous attention and affection to my mother. And my, the nurse says, oh yeah, he comes down every night and puts her to bed. We all think it's just the sweetest thing. <laughs> I mean, neither of my brothers could believe it and we didn't bother telling my sister about it. She doesn't give a damn. Strange family. So it's just luck. And, but there is skill too. You really go need to uh, read up a little bit on uh, Dr. Gottman and Mrs. Gottman. They uh, are able to predict which couples are gonna be together after five years. Most marriage counselors are lucky to predict with 50% accuracy, but hell, you could flip a coin, be that accurate. They are 95% accurate as to who's gonna still be together. So there are skills, but I insist it's also just luck, you know, finding that person. There, there's a couple of couples that I went to high school with, got married right out of high school, they're still married. They love each other, crazy. <laughs> I can't make any sense out of that. I told you, I'm on my third marriage and I have an enormous amount of respect for those two women that I was married to, but we were not a match. And now I got a match. And how in the hell does that happen? I don't know. And I wish you the best in figuring out how it's going to happen for you. If it does happen, hang on to it. If she tells you you're a piece of crap, nod your head vigorously. Yes, dear. I am a piece of crap now. How would we get to work on that? How, how, how could we fix that uh, terrible situation? Darling, stay with it.